why we stays on your neck. Stays <laughs> on my neck. Yo, my dance. Make sure you hit that like button, comment, subscribe, and obviously hit the bell for notifications. Well, well, well. Well, look, it's um, my man's gas. The boy, your boy, the YB is what we call hella H E L L A gas. Ghost out here, yeah. Fair play to let, let me, let me. You know, you know. I've I've seen a few people comment in and saying, "Oh, YB, you've been roasting, you've been cooking, you've been frying." Rob McCracken way too much recently. Been putting way too much pressure, way too much emphasis on the McCracken. But you know what I mean? I, I've been. I think in the last few days I did a video critiquing their choice of sparring partner, bringing in Tom the heavy bag little, bringing in. Um, what's that other Don's name? Andrew Sparka, A Andrew Sparko to be, and then one's there. And uh, listen, people think I'm biased. I'm actually not. Now, whether my opinion's right or wrong, I actually truly believe I'm. Every any opinion I give is 100% what I'm actually thinking. I never just say something for to to be a fan girl. I actually say it because I believe fundamentally I'm right. Now, with that in mind, the reason I give you that background is to say that listen, I've said myself for the longest time. When credit needs, when there's credit to be given, the YB will dish out credit. Now, what you've seen on your screen, as you've seen by this title, I've been, well, actually, let me let me start again. What I'm trying to say is that I've been saying that these sparring partners are moist, and those of you who watch my videos will know that there's been one key name, one key name I've wanted in the sparring, and I've been baffled why he hasn't been there or why I haven't known he's been there, and that was Derek Delboy Chisora. That was a man who is. The, the perfect, it's, it's, you know what, Derek Chisora is so perfect for this Andy Ruiz fight, it's, it's beyond explanation, because he's, if you can deal with Chisora, Andy Ruiz would be a, 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 a complete joke, does that make sense, yeah, number one, Chisora, hard hitting, yeah, Ruiz don't put all, put, put his body into his punches, he just kind of slaps, you don't, you got good technique, but um, he just kind of slaps, because when you, the problem is, Speed's good, but when you're throwing that many, four or five, and they're just kind of slappy. It's really hard to really dig five, three or four combos at once. Yeah? The best combos, historically, are at maximum three. Yeah? You might see three hooks or something like that. Does that make sense? One, two, three. That's normally the maximum. But any more than that, you kind of lose the ability to, to move your body into the punches. And they become more about just, just getting the volume in. Now, the reason that's relevant is, what do we know about Chisora? Chisora throws... Freeze, twos and threes, big twos and threes. So when you can deal with Chisora throwing big twos and threes, when it comes to Ruiz and them shots are just bouncing off you, because once you've been used to, isn't people don't realise that training is not not or boxing training in particular, isn't only about like preparing for the your opponent's technique and whatnot and their speed. It's also about absorbing shots. Does that make sense? Meaning that if AJ's been inspiring with this beast Chisora and he's been taking Big hooks, big loads off of the African Chisora, the big heavy African loads from Chisora, yeah? When he gets in there Ruiz and them Mexican shots are bouncing off him, because they ain't got, ain't got no snap on them. It, it's going to be, it's going to be, it's a completely different level of conditioning. You'll see people like, um, you'll see people like hanging off the chin-up bar and they'll have someone punching their belly. Similar same kind of thing, yeah? And when, and when AJ's in there with his tight, tight high guard defence and Ruiz is throwing his combinations and he's been used to, He's been used to being backed up versus Chisora and being pounded by Chisora. Chisora's African foreign hammers. What do you think can happen when, when Andy Ruiz gets in there and his shots are just pity patty bouncing off him? That's what it's going to be like. He's going to be conditioned for hammers and he's going up against a Don with a, I don't know, with a smaller hammer. Simple as that. That's what it's going to feel like. It's going to feel like, it's going to, like as an example, when, you, when naturally, when anyone gets hit with any shot, there's a level of shock, but the harder you'll hit, the more shock there is. And AJ will have now become accustomed, become accustomed to, accustomed, <laughs> accustomed to, like, let's call it 9 out of 10 power. He's become accustomed to that now. Now, when he goes in there with Ruiz, who has 6 out of 10 power, he's going to feel like a doddle in the park. It's not going to create the same response. Does that make sense? When you're, as an example, let's say you've been training with someone with 5 out, with five out of 10 power. And that's, that, that's how... Age actually wins many of his fights because because he is elite because he has elite genetics and elite elite makeup and elite training. His power is probably nine out of ten. So the fact of the matter is, in heavyweight boxing, the amount of people with nine out of ten power 
is few and far between. It's probably three or four in the whole world. So the reason that the reason that's relevant is when a lot when AJ goes in the ring with a lot of his opponents, his opponents have only been training with people with five out of ten power, and that's why you'll see. Look at Ruiz, for example. What happened when he got touched with a Ghostbuster? He looked shocked, and the reason he looked shocked was because he ain't used to feeling that power. That there's elite genetic power. Do you understand that? That there is is what you call g g gene editing power. Yeah. I've, I've spoke to some good physicians. They've told me, listen, there's a good chance that Andy Ruiz's offspring going forward ain't going to be the same because the way AJ hit him. Look, look at his eyes. Look, look at the Ghostbuster. Don't, don't come and don't be mad at me, Ruiz fans, Margin Boo fans. Don't be mad at me. Go and look at it. Yeah, AJ hit him and he was shocked. He he looked like he. Oh, it's true. Never mind what he looked like. He'd been hit like he'd never been hit before. He was his eyes was gaunt. He was like, what? He looked like he's seen a ghost. And that's the point I'm making. You can't, unfortunately, AJ's at that level of power, you can't really prepare for it at all. Because you can't get no Donnie in there who can hit that hard. That's why, when Ruiz got hit with that shot, you didn't see AJ with a Ghostbuster. You didn't, AJ never looked shocked at anything that was happening. That's the difference there. Ruiz was like, oh, what the, f what the F is this? What kind of demon is this in the ring? And he wasn't even there. AJ wasn't even half there. He was, he was un half unconscious from concussion. If the truth be known, but still, he hit him with a Ghostbuster, and he was he was bamboozled. Ruiz was ab he was completely shocked by it. Fair play to him, though. Don't get me wrong. I'll give him full credit. Whilst he he actually used that shock, he used that fear and that to actually boost him up. Does that make sense? That's the difference. Most some people it can go both ways. That's an example. Perfect example here. When AJ hit who was it? When AJ hit Charles Martin with a right hand Ghostbuster. He did the opposite. He got he got touched with a Ghostbuster and thought, you know what? I don't want no more of that. And he sat down. He found his way out. Fair play to him. Ruiz, to his credit, that Mexican fighter, he got hit and thought, you know what? Let's let's go then. But the fact of the matter is, both of them were, were just as shocked as each other. How they reacted to it is irrelevant. And that's the bottom line here. Uh, AJ is now, thank God, in or, or my prayers have been answered. And like I say, I'm not an insider, so I don't I don't know who's in the camp. I had I had hope Chisora was in there, but it's sounding like Chisora actually did come back. It's sounding like to McCracken's credit, like I said, I give McCracken credit. It sounds like McCracken did say or did or AJ and McCracken have had some sort of plan where after Chis Chisora's fight against Price, they were going to bring him in, and that's what that's smart thinking there. Yeah, like, do you know why it's smart thinking? Because the YB thought of it. That's why. But thankfully, they actually plan to do it anyway. That's smart. Yeah, that gives me that gives me encouragement. That they're not stupid. They're not bringing in Tabiti and Tom Little to try and replicate Ruiz. But anyway, listen. As I was saying, there's always going to come in, and not only the power. The people don't understand this. So we talked about the, pr the power. Age is, basically, Age is going to be prepared to be hit a lot harder than Ruiz can hit him. So when he's in there, he's going to be a lot more relaxed now because there, won't, there ain't going to be no shock. There ain't, Ruiz ain't going to have the force to create the shock because AJ has been shocking, been shocked in training by uh, by Chisora, for example. Now the other thing is is the sheer pressure. We're talking pressure dot com outcher because one thing that Ruiz people, one thing people have got way too gassed over is Ruiz's oh yeah oh Ruiz's feet oh yeah Ruiz's pressure. Ruiz has the slowest feet going. He's got that typical. It's even. There's, it, I mean, there's Mexican style feet, like Canelo feet. He's got similar feet. But then there's Ruiz, because Canelo has like plodding feet, but he is 160 pound or 180 pound. Ruiz has the same technique in feet, slow plodding feet, but he's got 260 pound on top of him, so he's even slower. So my point is. Chizora, what's Chizora versus Price? Chizora's got very, got that African explosive feet footwork. Seriously, when he steps in with the jab, he's explosive. Not as, not as explosive as Mike Tyson, but same as Mike Tyson. Mike, not, lot, not enough people actually rated Mike Tyson's footwork. Yeah, Mike Tyson was, his feet are so rapid, and he, like as an example, some fighters are sloppy. Some fighters you'll see them walk forward, they'll cross their legs and, and alternate between, they'll move forward, alternating between southpaw and orthodox. Mike Tyson was able to, to, to move forward but maintain his stance. Or, or, or actually, sometimes you'd even see him actually go from orthodox to southpaw to actually get the angle off and to 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 to, to, um, to bring his uh, to use his right to choose his lead hand as a right hook. But that's here or there. The point is, Mike Tyson was able to he's able to get into range rapidly with rapid feet, and that there is bamboozling. And to a lesser extent, Chisora has that. And my point is, regardless of Mike Tyson comparison. Chisora's feet are so much quicker than Ruiz's, and, it, and actually Chisora uses his feet to bamboozle opponents. You'll see him rapidly step in with a jab, or you'll see him rapidly step forward with lead hooks and get on top of people. And that's relevant because 
when you when you've been used to well when you've been used to dealing with uh, Derek Chisora trying to step in on you and you've managed to deal with that through sparring and you get in there through weeks of sparring you get in there with Ruiz who is nowhere near as explosive with his footwork it's going to feel a lot easier because everything's coming a lot slower or, or the footwork at least is coming a lot slower than it was against um, than it is when you're in there with Chisora you're going to be able to see things coming a lot it's going to, be, it's going to feel like you're, that Ruiz is, is moving in slow motion bottom line and the next thing in terms of the pressure the pressure is another thing. People get gassed about Ruiz. Oh, Ruiz pressure. Oh, Ruiz might die. Ruiz had no pressure. Yeah. A but look at look at the first fight. AJ won't even throw in his jab. I've got another video coming soon exposing how little punches AJ threw in the first fight. His his average historically is 41 punches. In this fight, it was like 20 27 or something. Yeah. See that, that there is like a two standard deviation difference. It's, it's unheard of in AJ's career. Never been that low before. And I bring that up to say this: even though, even though in that first fight AJ was throwing no punches, still Ruiz wasn't rallying forward. Compare what Ruiz did to what Chisora, how Chisora fought against, well, against anyone. But let's take the Price fight for recency purposes. Look at how Chisora always on you, yeah, always on you, no matter what, he's on you. Ruiz was not like that with AJ. Ruiz seemed quite happy to sit at mid range and just kind of feel it out. To be fair, that's most likely because he got hit with a Ghostbuster and he, he, he didn't really want to get in there too much. And that's another thing. That, that one thing for sure, if, if, if Chisora had had AJ like Ruiz did, as in finished and ready to go, Chisora would have finished him. People rate Andy Ruiz's finishing ability way too much. They rate him for being this. He's not a finisher. If, he, if Ruiz had any finish ability at all, AJ would have been done flat Sparko. That's what that's what would have happened, or at least, or at least Ruiz would have forced a stoppage. Ruiz didn't force a stoppage, if the truth be known. Forcing a stoppage when the ref pulls you off because you've, you've busted him up. Ruiz couldn't do that, and AJ was finished and ready to go for four rounds, literally for twelve minutes. Ruiz couldn't do nothing. Do you think Chisora? What do you think Chisora would have done? He'd been all over him, and the reason that's relevant is AJ through the pressure. AJ would have now had to have dealt with a man who's always on you. And he's also got better cardio than Ruiz. He just keeps coming. I don't know how he does it, but at least for the start of the fight, he, or in fact for all of it, he's going to keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. So once again, AJ's had to deal with, with a dude who's who literally takes, there's, there's no air in between. So once he gets in there with, with Ruiz, who's happy half, half the time to sit at mid-range, yes, he has a few bursts, but he's quite happy to sit at mid-range, that there's going to feel even easier because you're going to have more rest in the fight. So if you've been able to deal with Ch Chisora's 90% of the time pressure in you, and you go into a new fight with Ruiz, and he's kind of just sitting in mid-range. And not only that, as I mentioned, in the first fight, AJ weren't throwing a jab. Now, the fact is, he, he will have learned how to jab someone like Chisora's head off, or as an example. When he goes in there with Ruiz, who's happy to, even more to stay at like, mid-range, he's going he's gonna to be able to get his jab off even easier. Does that make sense? Yeah? But the final thing is, and it's something that you Ruiz fans can kind of tickle yourselves about, is that I do want to say that, Whilst I've given the positives there, so the AJ, can, AJ is going to be ultra prepared for the pressure, ultra prepared for the power, ultra prepared for the fast engagements, the fast footwork. I will say that one thing Chizora don't do is the is the um the fast hands. He's no matter what no one says, the power is not comparable. Chizora's miles above in power, but. It's kind of like a trade-off, to be fair. If I reckon Chisora might, I don't, maybe he wouldn't be, but I reckon if Chisora didn't, the reason Chisora is not as fast as Ruiz, or half of the reason at least, is is because he actually loads up. He actually looks to hurt people. He actually, he actually looks to turn people like Dave Price into Dave the Plumber Price. Yeah, he looks, to, he looks to take, he looks to turn a boxer in Dave Price into a plumber. Yeah, well, that's what I'm telling you right now. During that fight, I heard people within Dave Price's camp. We're ringing up the local, the local, uh, the local plumbers, saying you got any occupancies for Monday? That's what they was doing, because that's the kind of shots that Chisora was throwing. Chisora was throwing them shots that when when they hit when they hit you, you know your man, yeah, he's gonna be not be doing boxing on Monday. He's gonna be signing up to be the plumber, yeah. No, no word of a lie, yeah. T and K, T and K electricals, T and K waterworks. Then one's dead. That's the one they were ringing. I saw, I saw, I saw, I saw, the, I saw the yellow pages was open. I'm telling you now. Oh yeah, mate. Is that you? Is this um? Is this JP Waterworks? Yeah. Wonder if you got any vacancies. Good, good, very good experience. Dave Price, the plumber. Oh yeah, Dave Price. Great. Bring him in on Monday. Bring your CV down. That's what they was doing. No word of a lie. That's the kind of shots he was getting hit with, though. They knew, and that's what. Why, why do you think the towel came in so promptly? Because they already. I heard from the team that 
The only reason they threw the towel in then was actually because that they was waiting. Or the reason that they didn't throw the reason they didn't throw it in earlier was because they was waiting to make sure we had a job lined up for Monday. They didn't want to throw the towel in too early because they couldn't. They had to get the yellow pages out and start ringing people up. It was only until they locked in a vacancy on Monday. That they then thought, you know what, throw it in, we've got another job lined up, boom, simple. Anyway, <laughs> so yeah, as I was saying, half of the reason Chisora's not as fast is because he just, he lo he's like, ah, he loads up. But if, if he slowed it down, I, I reckon he wouldn't be much much slower than Ruiz, but that's that's him or there. The fact of the matter is, Ruiz, Chisora is what he is. He's, he throws two or three big bombs. Now, Ruiz don't really, don't throw big bombs, he don't have it in him. He, don't, he has the fast twitch, but he ain't got the bombs. So, them hands... That is, and that is, to be fair, quite an issue, yeah. But the key things, the pressure, AJ, the pressure, and the the power is sorted. But the fast hands, that is another, that is another bamboozling element. To be fair, that is another ghostbuster element. Pressure can ghostbuster people. If you're all over someone, it can. Oh, uh, if you're not used to it, oh, uh, you tire, you kind of. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's shocking. If you're not used to feeling big shots, that can shock you. If you're, if someone's just throwing, they don't, they don't even, and that's why Ruiz does do, 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 that's what Ruiz does do well, to be fair. He doesn't even throw, they're not even hard, but they're just, all that can, like, dis, discombobulate people. It can make you disorientated. When someone's just throwing shots all over the place, it can make you, you're not sure what's going on. And that's what Ruiz does well. So, but we do know AJ's brought in different people. That, that Albon Paraban, he went, He's not got all the other elements, but he's got quick hands. So that's that's what I mean. These bodies they've brought in. Chabiti may have been brought in, even though he don't really fr throw like um, curved shots. He doesn't throw hooks or uppercuts, but he's got um, quick hands because he's, he's cruiserweight. So that's probably why they brought in some smaller people because they want they want the raw speed and the raw combos. And I'm sure some of these sparring partners who have been brought in, they would have been told, "Let's try replicate this today. I want you to do this or whatever." And that's one thing I'd love. To, I'm not sure if they're doing it, but if I was in AJ's team. And I don't think enough boxers do this, but if I was with AJ or any boxer, not enough teams. Or I've never, I've never personally seen. I've never seen a team like separate or break boxing down. AJ should be doing sessions like how I'd break it down is into offense and defense. As in one day or for X amount of time, this session is going to be a defense session where AJ literally goes in the ring and all he can do is defend. Learn how to, because I've never seen someone break it down before like that. Yeah, they do it where the padman throws a few sloppy shots. I'm not talking about, I'm talking about AJ should do sessions where he goes in there, maybe with someone like, maybe with a cruiserweight or even a light heavyweight and just practices. He can't, he can't throw, AJ can't throw any punches and he just practices literally just being armless, essentially. All you can do is defend in the ring. And that's the that's the best way. I don't see anyone ever do that though. I don't get it. That's what you sh these fighters who are struggling with defense need to be doing. Because for t too long, or too much, people focus on offenses, defense, and that's what AJ did. When he gets when he gets hit, he kind of goes right. Let's fire, and it's a great it's a great strategy. But that said, you can, you need to know when to do what. You need to make sure you have that defense, which can tell you, you know what, worst comes to worst, I can sit on these ropes or whatever. I can keep it tight, as we've seen Mayweather done in the past. Like as an example, Mayweather versus De La Hoya, he was able to sit on the ropes all night, and just yes, he got caught a few times, but he was comfortable there. Because he, he, knew, he knows what to do, and that's the point. If, if you spent time doing full rounds, doing I'm talking about doing 6, 10, 12 round sparring sessions where you can't throw any punches, you'll quickly learn how to defend yourself. Or you can at least, that gives you the pure opportunity. You don't have to worry anything about throwing offense, but you know then, if you can do 12 rounds of pure defense without throwing a shot, you know then, listen, the worst comes to worst, I know I ain't going to get knocked out, or I know it's going to be very hard to knock me out, because I know, I, know, I know how to do it. But anyway... That's that's the only thing um that's the only thing I can add on this. Listen, but yeah, the great it's a great shout that she's always been brought in. Or oh, he's there for longer than I expected him to be. I thought he was only going to be there for a week, but it looks like the fact of the matter, she's always posted this photo out in the last day or so. So it looks to me like they're still in camp, which is great. Although how yeah, we've still got another four weeks left. So wicked, they've still got another two weeks of sparring out of four. Well, let's get let's hope it's not another three in before in before um, McCrackhead's got him in there sparring two days before. Definitely, stop at least two weeks before, if not more, if the truth be known. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> That's what I'd do. I'd do. If I was going to do that, I'd probably do it where... I'd spar up until about two weeks before, and in that last week, I'd do offence only. Yeah? Where AJ brings brings in people like Tom Little. Yeah, that's what you should do. Do 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 X amount of sparring, and in the last two weeks... So, so yeah. Then the last two weeks, stop proper sparring, and that, and then the second week, so two weeks before, that last se well, that second week into the fight... Just do, just bring people in like Tom Little, 
Then one's there, Dave Allen, who can just literally be heavy bags for AJ to make sure he's nice and sharp. But yeah, they can try and throw a bat, but you know what? Tom Little ain't going to do squat. Well, then one's there. Bring them one man in for them that last sec that second week. Tom Little, Dave Allen, who else is there? Yeah, them ones. Bring them man there to just come in there and just sharpen up AJ's offense up nicely. Sharpen that offense up nicely. Anyway, let me just end on. In fact, scrap that. I was going to read out the, the thing, but this video's on for long enough. You can see what Chizora said. But essentially, he's backing his man AJ to come back and, and Merkel Ruiz, and I agree. Let's get it. Yeah, babe.